Oh, technology. Beats are all patient. Hello, my peeps. <laughs> I'm sitting here muttering away, waiting for my computer to show me that it's live. Um, I thought, I'm going to bring up my Facebook, or my Facebook, my iPad, well, Facebook, but on my iPad, so that I can see, because the comments aren't even showing up on things tonight. And uh, all of a sudden it says I'm live. So, Hi, Tracy Stewart here. Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator and your friendly neighborhood paper pusher. Um, I swear we had this all working. Had it all working. On the weekend, though, I was, yes, very far behind finishing my taxes. And it was too hot to sit at my desk. So I unplugged everything and I took my laptop into my room, which is cooler and has my comfy reading chair. And I had a whole setup. It was awesome. <laughs> Big ceiling fan going. It was great. And everything, I had no problems with my computer at all. I got in everything. It's been a very busy day. I will show you why in a minute because it's a very exciting day too. Um, very exciting day. <laughs> so I got everything all hooked back up again. I actually hooked it up yesterday. I was working on my computer yesterday. But I was running a little late. But I got all my stuff together. And I'm like, I got a bit of everything here today. Ready to go. Quarter to seven. Let's start getting ready. I go, I have no Zoom on my computer anymore. There's no buttons for it. There's no anything for it. When I went to the website, it wouldn't work. I have no idea where my Zoom went. It's like, it's just gone. So then I went to Facebook. Well, Facebook, dear Lord, is it slow. And it's not showing me comments. Like, the, the screen looks different. And I, I can't figure out why. I can't figure out how to get to the comments. So I'm hoping if there's comments, they might show up on my iPad. Um, I can I can tell somebody's watching. Uh, or at least according to my iPad, it shows people watching. So we'll see. Anywho, we're here for What's Up Wednesday. <laughs> and what is up this Wednesday? Oh my goodness, people. Pa -da! <laughs> you have no idea how excited I am about this, as you may have noticed by the dorkiness. Um, the thing is, I gotta file this under perks of being a demo <laughs> because this 82 pages of glory is the new um holiday mini so it goes live for customers on in september 6th of september memory serves me and it has all things for like fall and christmas and there's even some just every there's some some you know absolutely have to have in your stash good sentiment sets that cover like the whole year or general occasions and uh, it, it, there's awesome stuff in here it's generally like the fall stuff but there's some good generic stuff in here and oh my goodness people like two pages in there's a sneak peek of a new tool that's in there i was so excited um here's the thing though you can't see it unless you're a demo so i have mentioned it on many an occasion the best deal in the world is the starter kit $135 gets you over $200 worth of stuff like by the time you add you get $165 worth of product you get a bunch of other stuff you get the new catalogs you get um, a free paper pumpkin kit which is like 35 bucks right there and they are knocking it out of the park with paper pumpkin lately and uh, all this stuff and if you order your starter kit you can actually order stuff from the pre-order starting next week if you start on the first second sorry this goes live on the second for demos so next week on the second which i think is wednesday uh you could actually order from this catalog demo perks people so tomorrow my partner in crime and i are going to peruse and analyze the out of this to plan for christmas extravaganza I like how i have everything in order so i can keep my cell phone track because sometimes i do just get so excited oh my goodness there's stuff in that book Yep, I couldn't wait. I printed it. I coil bound it. I was like, oh yeah. Uh, okay, so Christmas extravaganza. It is already just over half sold out for the in-person. The the to-go packages are, um, we haven't decided on the final number of those yet, but 
but the number of seats we're planning on the in-person is already a little over half sold out. On Friday, I will send an email to everybody that has already registered and let you know if there's a, like, whether well, you want to upgrade it or not. Um, if you have not registered, I would suggest registering. To register, you must fill out the registration form, which the link is always in the email or on the little scan code, if they have a scan code, the QR, and pay, and then I will send you confirmation that you're registered. I need those two things done before I send the registration out. Um, it is, we have a whole lot of people who are waiting to find out what we knew once the catalog came out. So Friday, I'm going to announce this. Tamara's going to announce this. We're going to, I'm going to send you guys all an email. Um, and yeah, boom, just like that. Tickets are going to be sold out. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? I will tell you though that Sunday is the 30th of July. And I picked Sunday so that I could do this first thing Monday morning. Tamara and I will first thing Monday morning, we're going to draw. And anybody who has registered and paid by Sunday night, on Monday morning, we're drawing and somebody's automatically getting a free upgrade, whatever we decide it's going to be. Um, so yeah, Christmas extravaganza. Uh, what else did I write on my list? Oh, I don't have a, I don't have a clever sign for it. Um, here, I could have a clever sign for it, but I don't. Here, let's just show you this again. <laughs> um, we got an email from Stampin' Up! today. And it looks like UPS and the Teamsters have a handshake agreement that's about to be voted on that will um, likely pass in the vote, which means there will likely not be a UPS strike. Now, yes, it's nice it, to get my Stampin' Up! stuff, especially when I get to pre-order from this catalog. But I think I'm actually allowed to show you the front cover. What? Um, <laughs> there you go. That's what I get. Um, it is nice to know that that's not going to happen. Sorry, I'm like, I just realized when I do this, I'm like totally laying on my desk and you can see me. Hello. It's my sweater I'm wearing because it's a little bit cool in the house. Um, but it's, I mean, so many other things are going to be impacted by it. Stuff that gets partway to the, to the border and then goes from the border and other companies. And there was no other company big enough to handle the volume that Stampin' Up! does. So imagine some companies that are even bigger than them. And the demand on the little guys and the, oh my goodness, it would have, we would have been back to worse than COVID shipping. Like, yeah, it's not just about the stamps. It would have been screwing up everything. Um, and as if the prices of groceries and food and things are not high enough, we don't need anything else to screw that up. So that's very good news. Also good news, <laughs> and I will do this, now I'll show you my sign, is starting next week on the 1st, there's a kit sale. Now... The kits have, are, are, I think, are like, woohoo! And I can tell you that I can see in the in this, they, they don't show you what the kits are yet, but I can see little bits and pieces of what I would assume are going to be the upcoming kits for Christmas this year, and uh, they're nice. And and it, it almost looks like there's three of them, so I'm thinking maybe September, October, November, possibly August, September, October. Um, they release a new kit on the first Tuesday of each month, so with this sale, there will also be a new kit. <clears throat> now what they're doing is they're taking all of the kits actually I don't even know if it's all the kits right now until the first I won't actually know which ones are on sale but I think it pertains to any it could be any of them and they're going to either be 10 20 or 30 percent off now these kits are awesome they're awesome and I'm going to show you something with one of the kits the newest kit soon to be the second newest but <laughs> currently the newest kit um in a minute the, these kits are good for so many things um and I'm, I'm going to send a note out to everybody who does ladies night or the gentlemen who come to the uh, guys scoring points night, which I've got one scoring points is scheduled for September. Ladies night is scheduled for October. Um, but so the ladies, we do kits at ladies night. Plus, if you want to just get a bunch of your friends together, buy some kits, I'll it'll do all the extra stuff, bring the extra tools and things you need. You pick a place and make some snacks and I'll bring the stuff over and Everybody can pick their own kit, and uh, you guys have a great ladies' night, and I'll help you through, right? It's, they're lots of fun. Um, the scoring points for the guys, we pre-make a bunch of stuff. It's not necessarily the kits, but most of the guys who are coming that are making stuff, they're making it for their crafty spouses or crafty friends or crafty kids or, well, they would love these kits too. They make great presents. So this is the perfect time to stock up. So I will send notes to you guys too to remind you, but yeah, perfect stuff. So, and they're good to have, like, take them to the lake, take them there, have them on hand in case you have company that comes over, you need something to do, grandkids, nieces, nephews, like, they're just, oh, the kits are great. So, they have lots of different occasions and things, 
but I do believe that uh, that we'll be seeing some Christmas ones here fairly soon. And I, so I don't know what they are ahead of time. I don't know what the sales are. I just know that starting next week. The other thing, oh, see, I got distracted. I was looking for my printout, couldn't find it, then I got totally Imagine that, I got distracted. Hard to believe, isn't it? Um, so you have until Monday to order and earn your bonus coupons, right? So any, for every $60 you spend in July, you get a $6 off coupon for August. But those of you who have already spent, thank you very much, uh, and made orders this month, you can start using your coupons on the 1st of July or 1st of August. So not only would the kit be on sale, but if you have a coupon, six bucks more, 12, 18, however many coupons you have. These are going to be awesome deals. That also makes me think they're going to go fast. <laughs> how much is in stock? How long would it take to resell? I don't know any of these answers. It, that's not the nature of the kits. They're just there on the website. Here you go. So I would think though, have a look now at what's already there. There will be one new kit out on August 1st and on August 1st, I will send out the information of, Hey, here's the new kit. Remember the sales on here's some links stock up and then we'll start going from there. This is going to be great. So, and I do have this, so this is what I'm going to show you tonight is blossom kits. Um, and so these are the latest ones. This one's a very beachy theme, a birthday. This is just a forever friends on tonight. I think that was generic. Um, they did have the home decor kit. Um, the wreath, they still have those. These tanks are awesome. Some of the kits have stamping, some don't. So these are the ones that are all currently out, right? There's some from previous years and, but I have a feeling that the ones that are reduced the most are going to go fast because, um, they're just, they're awesome. That's all I can say. They're awesome. So kids, did I mention there's a new catalog out for demonstrators and you should really be a demonstrator. Here's the other thing with demonstrators. You sign up now, you get all your stuff. Then you can still do the pre-order if you want, but you can also um, get you get your discount on top of the sales. So I plan on buying some kits next week, and I'm going to use my six dollar coupon, use whatever percentage sale is on there, plus my demo discount. By the time I'm done, they're going to be practically free. Because <laughs> that's right. If you become a demo, I will tell you how to get the best deals ever. Because that's how I roll. Okay, I have to find I, I my office is just a, like an absolute disaster today and I'm trying not to um, knock anything on the floor. Okay, so some of you know, if you've been if you've been paying attention, if you've been following along, um, my demo team that I'm on, which, and I will still say, like getting the catalog early, yes, that's awesome. Getting sale prices, yes, that's awesome. But the best part of being a demo is actually the community. Like the stamping community is fantastic. The demo community, I have so much fun. And part of the reason I'm all like giddy and excited this week is because we have a demo event this weekend. The Canadian Demonstrator Development Manager, DDM, had to remember what those meant, is coming to Edmonton and there's, I think there's 80 of us. So we have like a Friday night event for certain um, titles and then a Saturday event. And I've got my name tag ready. We've got a name tag contest and I've got my shoe box swap ready because we're going to make shoe swaps and I'll show you those next week. Um, and then we all get together and talk business and do and I'm so excited for this kind of stuff. It's fantastic. Now the team that I am on, Tamara's Trailblazers, woo woo, go Trailblazers, Trailblazers. I don't know why I have such a hard time with that word. Um, one of the challenges that Tamara puts out every now and again, I think once a month, yeah, there must be once a month, um, is to take a, a stamp set that is just stamps. There's nothing fancy. There's no dies. There's no glossing folders. There's not a whole suite of paper and all those things. And go back to the basics and make some fun, simple cards without using all the tools. Now I have all the tools and I like to use all the tools, but I have been having an absolute blast making cards with this set. Cause look at it. It's adorable. Um, I was going to show you the recap, but I just realized I moved some of them. Okay. So today was, today was my last day of it. Um, you do, you're supposed to do one card a week, but I think I mentioned before I'm moving around and standing up and stuff. I think I mentioned before that I, um, all my Harry Potter cards are gone. How could I do with them? Um, I've been I've been in multiple mode lately, so I I hope you can still hear me as I wander around my office wondering what I did with the other cards. Um, oops, knocking stuff over. Stop moving things. Danger, danger. Okay, I don't know where they went. Well, I had posted them earlier, but I made some oh, some fantastic Harry Potter cards. Um. Anyways, yes, I'm in multiple modes. So I make one card and then I have to make six six versions of it. So 
Yeah, I don't know what I did to them. But th this stamp set, so I'll just quickly show you how we got to here. Here's some cards. So these were really basic. Then I started adding some layers and cardstock. And for the most part, this is cardstock, ink pads, um, my scissors, my trusty little snips, which I had the funniest discussion driving to get groceries with my son today about how sharp these are and wouldn't it be funny if you were an, an assassin and you could only use snips? <laughs> I don't even know how we got on that topic. Um, there's other things in there that aren't birds, like books. Uh, did anybody notice this card? And I actually had a version of it also with... <laughs> um, I took it apart to do something else with the plaid, but this would be Fraser plaid, there's your hint that I hand colored and then I had these books over top of it. But there, I'll get the, the, these books are actual in order color coded spine and all. If anybody knows what those are. And yes, it is always a good day when we spend time together. I love to read. Uh, that was my little gift card holder that I made. Uh, there's nothing in it right now. Uh, this is the one with the tear and thing, so it's not taped shut. But I absolutely love this. I love the two tones of of uh, DSP. So those were that, plus all the Harry Potter cards, which have, mis <laughs> have mysteriously disappeared. Isn't that appropriate? Seriously, what did I do with those, I wonder? Hmm. I got no idea. Anyhow, today's entries, and I'm going to show you two things with them, are a wedding card <laughs> and a baby card. So <laughs> I love to color. I love to fussy cut. Not everybody does. So one of the ways you can add color to stuff without having the blender, just if you don't like to, is um, just either stamp on cardstock. So this, these birds are stamped on balmy blue. And yes, it's the same bird. But Tracy, it's facing two different directions, you ask. I know. Stay, stay tuned. And these ones are the two little birds, like the same bird and then just the baby bird. Um, and they're just stamped on designer series paper. The leaves are stamped on a different designer series paper. The branch is on a different one. I was going to town. I was like, can I put three different ones? Yes, I can. Three different patterns, three different colors. And then I just put a little bit behind it to give it a little more volume. But yeah, baby card. Or you could, this could actually be a, like a Father's Day or a Mother's Day card as well. Um, and uh, yeah, my little birthday card or wedding card. So here's the thing. I'm going to show you really quick two things on here. One... If I can get my, oh, look at that. You see his glasses? His glasses are not, like I didn't fussy cut around them. See this? So this would be the after the wedding reception. <laughs> Drunken bird. Um, they're just on with a glue dot. But, oops, just a minute. Let me, get them. Let, me, let me get them sorted. This is before the wedding. Oh, no, he still had a, he still had a couple there. Just a minute. I can't see what I'm doing when I'm trying to do it on the camera. There we go. So there's our little bird. So here's what I did. The when you get a, a, the clear or the photopolymer stamp sets, they actually come between two pieces of of um, acetate, a, a more a stiffer one and then a really soft one. And so you peel them apart and you stick them into your stamp or your stamp case, right? Well, I, and I generally just turf the stuff that comes with them. But in this case, I happen to have one lying around, and all I did was stamp his glasses you see on the plastic with stays on stays on is our permanent ink and you can do i i haven't tried it myself personally but i have seen people stamp coasters bottles glasses like you can stamp it on anything let it dry sorry i was trying to get too many things on my desk um see for every surface and then it doesn't smudge and so that's what I did. I But I did let just let it dry for a bit. And then I just fussy cut around it. So then his glasses are now like glass and shiny. And I found that if you turn it over, the backside that you didn't, and I can't make it look good on here, but I'll try to do it with the card again. Um, like I stamped it and then I flipped it over. I found the backside looked better. Oh, but see, it looks like glasses, right? Wasn't that fun? <laughs> I thought it was fun. Okay. And then I will show you, I know when I did, when we had the stamp apparatus, and it's unfortunate that, you know, legal garbage gets in the way of things because, oh my goodness, that tool is just awesome. But even without it, there are ways to do things. So I know when we had that stamp apparatus still, I did a little class and I showed you all these different techniques for stuff. 
today when I was making this card and I thought, I'm going to make a wedding card. I'm going to put two birds on it. Now, I probably could have um, taken like these two birds or these two or right any one like I could have had all these different combinations but I wanted to use the same bird so it looked like you know Mr. and Mrs. of the same or Mr. and Mrs. Mr. and Mr. Mrs. and Mrs. whatever of the same species of bird though I think species is the right word so I wanted to use the same bird nonetheless so here's what I did in about two seconds I went old school this is our silicone mat which is what I generally craft on. I will have a little, like you said, I mean little, look at this piece of paper. I think this is a quarter of a placemat and then I folded it in half. And it's just here so I can, when I'm done stamping, I like to like stamp and get as much ink as I can off before I, before I wipe it. Otherwise it makes the wipes and the sponge and everything dirtier faster. So I mostly <laughs> stamp on my silicone mat as my backdrop for everything. Well, this is how awesome this thing is. It's, it's good for adhesives and all sorts of things. Here's all I did. I took my stamp and I forgot to bring a scrap piece of paper so I'm just going to do the final one. And all I did was I stamped right onto my silicone mat. And the trick to this is, and I didn't get his legs very well, but that's okay because we'll just make him the lower one. Um, seriously, I don't have a scrap of white. I got to use my good label. I want to use my good label. Just one second. It, it, it's impossible to me that I don't have scrap white paper somewhere close by. <laughs> Why did I not grab one before I started? There we go. See, there's always one. Um, so yeah, the, the trick is to not smudge, like not to squish things around. So this is all I did. Is I stamped on there, and then you have to just lay the paper down, give it a nice little rub, without moving the paper or the silicone mat. And then again, without moving the paper or the silicone mat, grab a corner and just pick it up really quickly. And there's my bird. Whoops, I just about dropped it in the ink pad. There's my bird going the other direction from how the stamp goes. I find if you're going to stamp, so these ones I stamped on the balmy blue and then I cut out. I, I feel like I need an audit audience machine because that worked out so well. It didn't smudge or anything and I want to, ooh, from the audience. <laughs> I don't get one, but I want one. Um, and, and because I have no idea if comments are happening because nothing is showing up on my thing. I have no idea if anybody's even commenting. Um, and then, yeah, this is the beauty of the silicone mat. I just wiped it off. And I'll just let it dry before I set my paper back on it. Uh, anyhow, yes, so there's this. I find if you're doing two of them and you are going to stamp on the same, like these ones are cut out, but if you if you wanted to like stamp on the same thing, that's why I had the other piece out. I find it's easier to do the um, the reverse one first because you're just trusting that when you stiff, stick it upside down on that piece of paper, it's going to go where you want it to, right? You can't see. You can kind of see, but not quite as well. So <clears throat> I always do that one first. Then I do this guy. And this one I'm just going to put a little bit lower. And out we go. Now, here's the difference. You can see... The one stamped much darker than the other. Uh, and it is sometimes on the, on the silicone mat, I'll try it again here, you can get a darker image. Um, sometimes you don't. I'm going to try one more time and just see if I can. I also kind of left it a bit there while I was looking for the paper in between. So we'll keep it as inked up as possible and as wet as possible. And then, like I said, the, you just you can't move anything because you'll you'll blur your image. We'll pick up as much ink as possible. Yeah, see that one's darker. I like to wipe this before I throw it somewhere else because uh, I set things on top of things all the time and I don't want to get ink everywhere. So yes, this one did turn out, I don't know if you can see. So I sort of have light, medium, dark. Um, the other option, if you want to make them closer, is so I did this one and he did turn out a little bit darker than that other one so lightly stamp off your bird so right just stamp them on your paper beside you and then stamp this dude and give him lots of good press oh my goodness worked out better than I could have hoped so because I'm taking just a bit of the full force look at how matched those two bad boys are
right? So now it looks intentional that the one is larger than the other. Oh, that turned out. I'm super duper impressed with that. Now I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to cut it. Oh, what's it a little? Oh no, maybe it'll fit there. I'm gonna have to cut it out now because it just turned out so well. I'm gonna have to make it into something and put a little ring on it. I think that would help. Um, okay, so what I did on this guy though. Oh, I'm super impressed with that. I, here's the thing. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. I wanted these to be different to show you that, and I mean, this is extreme. This is quite light to a perfectly nice dark stamp um, so that you could see that here's a way to get them to match better. But the contrast here and the matching here, it worked so well today. Um, okay. So then, yep. So I, I wasn't in a rush and the whole zoom thing threw me off. I tried to bring on the amount of pieces of paper over. So here's what I did with the other one. I'm just gonna keep bringing this guy back. So I stamped, oops, that's not supposed to be there yet. I stamped. I'm gonna cut these ones, so. I transferred, I guess that's what the, that portion would be called. So I transferred it, so the same thing. It's not super dark. How many times am I going to wipe a bird off this map? One never knows. Um, I really wish I could find out if anybody is commenting. Um, and why I can't. Because it's feeling streaming fairly solo tonight. Um, okay. So the other thing you can do. So then here's this guy, right? The other thing too is, and I did, I did smush this a little bit. Um, not on purpose. I just did it. <laughs> because I was going too fast. So you can see the lines are a little thicker and they got a little fuzzy. Okay, so one of the things you can do, and that's what I ended up doing on this, and it worked because, I found it worked because it was colored paper. I find it doesn't work quite as well if you do it on white paper. It seems to be, I well, I guess I just don't have a steady enough hand. And I will tell you that this was an easier technique with the old markers. So with the newest catalog, they changed the markers. And for certain things, it's so much better. But the bullet tip on the new markers is bigger than it was on the old markers. So on the older markers, you have a little more forgiveness in it. Here's what I found with using the new ones. The solution, as odd as it might sound, is to go faster. <laughs> do not press down hard. Do not linger. Go faster. <laughs> Um, because if not, they, you know, make a big smushy thing. So what I did on this one, and I'll show you in a minute. So you, cause you, now that I, once I point it out to you, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to tell that I actually did that. See, go faster. Um, is I just traced it. I'm going to show you in a minute why I traced both of them. So I did this and like I said, it was easier with the, the other ones that are just had a little bit skinnier. But if you go quickly, so I'm not pushing super hard down. I'm not holding for any length of time because, like I said, then it smudges. There we go. Now when you look at him, now he's bigger than the other one. So what did I do? I just used it as a print. And I did both of them with the marker, even though this one is totally fine. But now they look the same. Okay, that one I went a little too fast, but you get the gist, right? So those two are both stamped and traced with the marker. And like I said, now that I've mentioned it, you can probably see more that I did it. But when you just first look at the card, I think because these birds are so gosh darn cute, <laughs> you don't really notice. You just notice cute birds. So that is how you get the mirror image. That's what the technique is, mirror image <clears throat> of your birds. Yes, would it have been easier just to pick the two going in different directions? Yes, but that's not how I roll. So, wedding card, baby card. My last two. Why was everything in blue? I don't know. I'm on a real blue kick. Um, blue. This is balmy blue, but it doesn't even seem to matter which blue I use. I love the azure afternoon, the really bright one. Um, boho blue is a little smoky blue. Navy blue. I've always loved navy blue. Uh, this is pecan pie. This is one of the new colors of brown. This is lemon lime twist, which is a returning color. We had it before. I loved it when we had it before. Uh, seriously, this white with, and you'll notice that in a, so much of my stuff. I am like totally in love with this color combination right now. You could easily have made a pink and a blue bird. 
two pink birds, I don't know, green and yellow birds, you can make it whatever you wanted. Um, same here, you could have had, like if this was a Father's Day card, maybe, and I know it's traditional, but it just kind of people, I think that's their default. Like, you know, a blue guy with a little a little pink baby, or the, a pink mama with a blue baby, or you know, make whatever, make it, like I said, green, yellow, gold. Um, I just happen to be on a blue kick, like they're making everything blue. So, mirror technique with the birds. Um, I had one more thing I was going to show you. I just got to make sure I have nothing open or wet on my desk. Okay, last thing I'm going to show you, because remember, kits are on sale next week, starts next week. So, some of the kits, and I'm going to, just because it happens to be, now this is a paper pumpkin. <clears throat> the paper pumpkin kits are not on sale. They are subscription, right? So each month is a different one. We don't know which one they are. Sometimes they go on sale. It's not like they never go on sale, but they're just not part of this sale. But for the point of demonstrating, and look at these, remember these cards from last week? Awesome. Uh, for the point of demonstrating, <laughs> a lot of the kits will come like this, and they do look a lot like paper pumpkins, some of them. So they come with all the card bases you need. There's adhesives in it if you need it. There's a spot, and there's a little stamp set, right? So that is what a lot of the kits, even in the kit collection, there's more kits with stamps than without. But every now and again, there's a kit, and not just the home decor ones, but, but like some of the card kits that don't have a stamp set. They have die cuts that are pre-printed pre -printed with sentiment. That's hard for me to say. So this is one of those kits, and this just came out. And I think slim lines are, are pretty popular. That's the style of card. Um, I think I think this might be the first kit with slimline cards in it. I don't, I don't remember everything. Let's face it, half the time I don't even know what day of the week it is. But um, I just, I don't think there was one before. But I will look at all the comments and, and answer any questions and stuff afterwards. So um, feel free to pop that in there. But if you know for sure if there was one, let me know. So yeah, a whole bunch of adhesives, a whole bunch of glue dots. And then this kit happens to come with two different size slimline cards. So the deal with Slimland cards is instead of being traditional card size, like either this way or this way, whichever way you're looking at it, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. If you're in Europe and it's, I think those are A1, ours is A4 and theirs is A2 or maybe the other way around or something. Um, their cards are a little narrower, a little taller, I think is how the European like standard size goes, but they're not far off from this. The deal with Slimlines is they are long and skinny. And I have all these bits and pieces on top of this card, so I cannot take it out. But I have noticed that there doesn't seem to be a standard slim line. Because you'll notice these ones are bigger. And actually, because I have to notice that I had money in my wallet, or sticking out of my bag the other day. Um, so if you were giving somebody money, so let's get, uh, what's her name? I forgot her name all of a sudden. Viola. Viola Desmond. Let's get her. Cause she did awesome things in Canada and Halifax. So let's put her on screen. Um, so yeah, if you're giving money, these are great will fit money. I was curious on the smaller ones, if money would fit in them. And it looks like it does. I don't know why did I open this one and not the other one? I'm not really sure. So this is, and I guess for context then, this card is slightly wider, but almost the same length as a bill, as a Canadian bill. Uh, American bills, I think are longer. Uh, European money is bigger in general, I think. It's been a while since I've been to Europe. I can't remember how big the euros and the pounds and stuff are. There we go. <clears throat> okay. So, here's a couple things I wanted to show you. So, when I tell you you should stock up and have some kits ready, just in case, you know, some pop by, um, this is how easy some of these kits are to put together. I'm going to show you, there's two things I want to show you to do with these kits, but um, this one in particular. But I will show you because I've made such a mess of my desk. I'm just going to do it on top of the box here. Because these have holes in them, like purposeful die cut holes though, you do want to get a few more dimensionals. That's why you have such a big sheet of them. <clears throat> you do want to get a few more dimensionals than normal on them because if not, the, the pieces are all going to sag when you add the other stuff to it. And, and nobody likes a saggy card. So we are going to do that on this card just to get it so it stands up where we want it to um if you i guess if you wanted to you could just adhere it straight to the card um it just it would still work it just wouldn't have as much dimension i i 
I'm guessing that for most markets, the like thickness of a letter is the same. And so you're not, this one layer of stuff is not going to put you over the top. There's no up and down on this, which is good. There's not, by the way, these are, um, they come embossed. This is one of the beauties of kits is you get all these different layers and textures and somebody else did all the work for you. So with the other one underneath, I can only partially see, but I think I'm straight and centered. Not too bad. Not <laughs> ah, that may remind me of Notting Hill, the roommate in Notting Hill, when he looks at himself in the mirror after he gets caught by paparazzi and he's like, not too bad, not too bad. That's what that just reminded me of. Okay. <laughs> How many of you think Tracy's a whack job? <laughs> well, you are right. Uh, <laughs> I'm totally okay with being a weirdo, by the way. That's why you'll notice I've never made any attempt to change because I am a-okay with it. Okay, so we need these. All these die cuts are done for us, too. So we need two of them. I, gotta, I have to move some of this stuff. It's all getting in the way. I haven't even got to the main point of what I wanted to tell you about this kit yet. Um, I just love these kits. And the, so the cards are the same, right? Um, sorry, I'm off camera. Um, I, I, I've mentioned this to you before, I think. There is no waste in this household, um, especially good dimensionals. So as soon as I take the first, like first time I take dimensionals off and I free up some of the edge, I, I normally I would go around all four sides. I don't. But in this case, I cut the edges right away and use those bits too. Because waste not want not. So what we're doing is we're putting dimensionals on the back of the uh, apples. And these are lovely little watercolored apples so that we can fit them into the little hole. And we want them to be like just kind of popping out of the hole, but we don't want them stunk down, right? So they have to have the same amount of dimensional as the thing around them. So I guess if you were to glue this straight down or adhere it straight down, then um, you could pop these up and then they would have even more dimension. But right now they just have the same dimension. And then these are already... Look at this, they're already pre-cut. So when you put them on the right way, this way, how do I do that? Yeah, I, I think I should have paid attention to where I was putting that. Is this gonna like pop, poke, poke out? I put my, I put my, um, I put my dimensional where the handle is supposed to go. So you know how we're gonna fix that. We're just gonna cut the part that goes underneath. So that I can, you know, in the interest of time, I'm not going to fight with that shoe, Rudolph. Um, so yeah, if you if if you had been planning better and you hadn't um, you hadn't done that, see, I was going to put them on the outside. I just realized looking down that they have them tucked under, but I was going to have the the branches on the outside. And that's why I didn't uh, I didn't do it right. So we'll just do a little trim there. Put that dude there. And then there's my other glue dot right there. So I'll just pop that glue dot on. Now this one, because of the angle, I might be able to, oh, <laughs> still a little too long. Yeah, so I, I should have planned that out a little bit better. I should have looked, actually I should have looked at the card or decided just to go with my original plan and have the thing stuck up. Now it also comes with this little sheets of vellum that are pre-stamped in the middle. So they look like little apple blossoms. And I'm just going to pop a couple of those. And even though it's vellum, which means you can see through it, with the glue dots, um, the pretty much the whole center is being covered in the... And so you're mostly just seeing the little yellow flower behind it, not as much as the, um, the glue dot. So there we go. So that's... I haven't quite finished because I'm going to get to the point that I wanted to show you. Um, I do kind of like the idea, though, of of uh, the stick sticking out, but they tuck it under. See, in this one, I think there's actually right and left sticks as well, because I just realized this one's going the other direction. Uh, okay. Anyways, the point I was going to show you was, you easily pop your stuff on. It doesn't have to look as hard as I just made it. Wait a minute. See, because this one, it shows going this way, which does not work. So that's what makes me think, is there left and right one? Yes, there is. 
So there we go. There are left and right ones. So this lines up. And see, in this one, nope, see, right there. That's the thing is I forgot about the tucking under. So sure enough, that is, you know, when you dig and, and the easiest way to find rocks in your ground is to try to dig a hole. Yeah, <laughs> it seems to be the same with, with me and dimensionals today. Uh, because exactly where that dimensional is, is exactly where that branch goes. Okay, so I guess we're doing the whole thing. There we go. Okay, so there, hint for you. There are right and left leaves. Right facing and left facing. And then we tuck that under. And because I trimmed it off a little bit, it is no longer in the way. And then I just need... So I, I may have shown this before, but this is a little trick you can do with your roll of glue dots. And even on the vellum, it works. I'm just popping them down and I can see through to see the glue dot and to get my little star. This is easier when they're not stuck to a sheet like this. I'm gonna put one more, I think. So I have an odd number because that's how I like it. So what you can do though, is I've pre-dotted I've pre -dotted <laughs> my glue dots now. And I, there, I realize it's vellum, I'm like, oh no, you can still see them. So I've got them pre-done now. So then when I go to put them on, I just pop them off and put them on as I go. There we go. And I think we need one up there. And pop another one over here on the side where that little joint is there. All right, so we have apples now. So now we have, and this is the, the part I wanted to tell you when I have to cheat and look underneath there again, because if you want to be really entertained, I'll try to say all these different words. <laughs> okay, so which one is this? So for the other, um, for the smaller card, this is the sentiments. And you do what you want. I imagine you could make these fit. Uh, it would be a tight squeeze on some of the other cards. Okay, so what we have on this one is happy birthday. We have uh, Fien Verjaldig, which is Dutch. <laughs> and you would know that because my pronunciation would be like, Spot on. Uh, get ready for it. Germans up next. Is Shonen Gubersthag, <laughs> which is probably not even remotely close to how you say it. So, yes, I don't speak any of those languages. I barely speak English some days. I do know a little bit of French, though. Un petit peu. And when I read this, I was like, c'est la fête. Doesn't that mean it's the party? <laughs> so I Googled. And yes, Google Translate, Google online Googling. It's, it's just entertainment. Because I have, I got many, many different explanations for what this is. And some of the, the, like the translators were like horrible grammar, but best I can tell, this might be just like a little idiom. And I think it means it's your party is my best guess. So it doesn't say happy birthday. It says it's your party <laughs> or it's a party or it's the party or, you know, so this could be used for many occasions, birthdays being one of them. Um, when Stampin' Up! translates, they do ask people of you know, native to whichever language they're translating. And when they're, when there's, this is the other thing I meant to say, when there's not a stamp set in it, um, some of the kits you can get an English stamp set or a French stamp set. I'm not sure if any of the kits have Dutch or German. There's a, it, usually only if you're in that market can you get them there, but I'm not even 100% sure. I know in Canada you can get English and French. If they do labels though, like if they pre-do them, it's the same four languages, English, French, German, and Dutch. And what they do is they, they try to make it like the same sentiment, but sometimes things don't just don't translate. Like something you might say in North America isn't something Europeans would say, so it doesn't make any sense. But what they would say, or what fits the size better, or um, have you ever watched a, a, a movie with subtitles and the person speaking in another, or it's usually in a comedy, I'll, I'll admit, but, or the other person speaking and they're like, and the translator looks at him and goes, uh, no. So sometimes it just takes too many letters to make it fit. So they're not always exactly the same. I think it's always fun to check and see. Such is the case with the labels for the other one. So the English one says you matter. I'm not crazy about that, I will admit it. I do think people matter and I do think it's nice to tell them that they matter. But I don't know, in this case, I, if, if it's not used right, I, it sounds sarcastic to me. That, there you go. That's what I think. But again, my <laughs> rudimentary language skills, I knew that in German, this mit lieb meant with love. <laughs> and I Googled to be sure, and yes, it does. And then 
this one is the Dutch again, which I have no idea what Dutch sounds like. When when we went to Amsterdam a couple years ago, um, and and then we're, we went somewhere else too. Um, the the Dutch tour guide had the most lyrical musical, like it was just great to listen to. But do I remember what any of the words are or what they sounded like? No. So this says something like Toffee Pier, <laughs> which is which is how it reads in English, not at all Dutch. But anyways, that's something like that, which when I translated it actually means great guy. So this this could be given to any number of people for any number of occasions. And then again with the French, en tout amitié, or amitié, I can't remember. Um, I'm like, this has something to do with in all, I was like, in all, and I was, trying, I was stuck on this word. But what it means is in all friendship. So we have you matter with love in all friendship, great guy. So that's the fun of getting the pre-printed labels in the different languages. And I do not know anybody who speaks Dutch. I know I know Dutch people. I don't know that they actually speak Dutch. Um, but I'm going to ask because the one lady who makes cards, um, I know she's Dutch. Her husband is Dutch. Perhaps she needs some great guy labels that she can just like leave lying around the house. Um, I do know people who speak English, French, and German, though. So who knows what these might be good for. Anyways, um... My whole point was to tell you about the languages and then show you when there's no stamping how easy these kits go together and how quick and there's less cleanup. But of course it's me, so I get all sidetracked and it takes 20 minutes to do something that should be five. Um, but here's the, here, let's, you know, let's pretend like we paused the actual clock and now we're back at it. So look how much easier this is when everything's pre-done. Um, and here's one of the other reasons I like to cut up those pieces because I do want to put some on the back here, but I definitely don't need full huge dimensionals on here. But again, I'm putting a couple because um, I want them to go in the hole. And then, boom, it's your birthday. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, I, believe me, kits are easier than I just made that look. Um, and they're awesome. And like I said, having ones in other languages, it's, that is good. <laughs> I'm going to put them all back in the box now that I have them everywhere. And I did I did write the translations on there and so that if I forget later, I can remember what they are. I just knocked pieces all over the place. And yes, they do clean up nicely, though, because everything just goes back in the box. They come with...